Yeah. Uh, it's one thing to, you know, sit down and help someone create a brand. It's another thing to be in a position to guard that brand. Mm-hmm. And you're right. We did have a lot of back and forth to get to what is um, the visual representation of AGC. And we fought a little bit about color. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, design is always changing. And personal aesthetic is different from business aesthetic. And sure. uh, that's absolutely true in my own company. Today's podcast guest was a farm kid from Minnesota who grew up on a dairy farm who went on to study philosophy in college. But philosophy only led her to her true passion, which is graphic design. She uses her philosophy background to understand her clients better, to build relationships with them better, to help consult with them so that they get the most out of their branding experience. She shares what it's like to go beyond the design and listen to the person, to listen to the company. What is their vision? What is their mission? What is the audience that they're trying to get in front of? What emotion do they want to create with their brand? How to guard that brand? And that consistency is the key. Close but not the same can even be dangerous. My name's Travis Sims, and I am the founder and CEO of AGC Accelerated Global Connections. And this is the AGC Experience. Businesses everywhere strive to be seen and heard in today's marketplace. Gone are the days when a simple open for business sign could be hung and a Yellow Pages ad created, resulting in customers pouring through the doors. Clarity Marketing specializes in social media strategy and execution. The Clarity team is more than just a faceless vendor. They become a seamless extension of the brands they serve, achieving a common goal of business success. If your company is looking for a premier social media marketing agency that is responsive and invested in your success, contact Clarity Marketing at 651-214-7290. Today I'm here uh, with my friend Holly Burnett uh, with Beyond Design. And Holly, I couldn't wait to have you on the podcast. I couldn't wait to be here. Oh, thank you. And it's because you were one of the first people that I sat down with and had a conversation with uh, around, hey, uh, I'm looking at starting a networking organization. Mm -hmm. And you helped me in so many ways because I think one of the hardest things to do, like I had the idea I had I had even a, a one year plan, a five year plan. I had I had all these things that I wanted to do, but I didn't have a brand. Right. Yes. <laughs> I didn't have a logo. I didn't even have a name. Right. That was the hardest thing for me to pick was the name. As a matter of fact, I, I bought multiple um, different domains. Sure. Trying to figure out which one I was going to go with. Yeah. And so, uh, I anyway, I, I'm excited to have you. I'm excited that you're here. All right. So, Holly, uh, what I'd love you to do is I'd love you to tell our audience a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your business, and and introduce yourself. Absolutely. Well, first, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a it's a great pleasure to be here. And yeah, it was it was a fun and exciting conversation to have. Yeah. Um, I'm lucky because I, I get to have a lot of those kinds of conversations um, with individuals that have just fantastic ideas and are trying to get from point A to point B. Um, But you had asked how I got started, so uh, we'll go there. A little bit about me. uh, I'm a farm kid. I grew up on a dairy farm uh, about two hours north of here. And um, after graduation, I decided to attend the College of St. Benedict. And uh, interestingly, my degree has nothing to do, (laughs) nothing to do with design. Um, I studied philosophy and psychology in school. And... uh, it turns out that um, philosophy degrees don't necessarily always lead to gainful employment. Uh, yeah. But I was uh, blessed to get a position, and one thing led to another, to another, and after a few years, uh, Beyond Design was born. And it was actually born mostly because I shot my mouth off in a meeting. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, you know, uh, live and learn. But uh, the beautiful thing was that what came of that was an opportunity to, to do my very first design. And um, it was probably horrible. Uh, it was over 15 years ago, and uh, I 
really just had an opportunity to make something different than what people had seen before. And luckily for me, it led to a great return, which led to interest in what I was doing, which uh, birthed my baby, Beyond Design, and here we are. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's how I got started. Oh, that's awesome. I, I wonder if, because I've enjoyed just getting to know you as a friend, and I, I tell you this all the time, like, we don't talk enough. I know. We, we need to talk more, because I really enjoy uh, sharing ideas with you, and just o- almost in a consulting way, and, and uh, you give me such great feedback and direction, and I, I wonder if, if your degree in, uh, or your uh, background in philosophy or psychology has any effect on how you listen and how you do business. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. You know, the reason that I even named my company Beyond Design is because I saw a big hole, especially for small business and startup, between consulting agencies, companies mm-hmm. that were out there specifically to guide and um, come alongside businesses and design, which was another area that was um, needed for those businesses and then production. And uh, so that con- that consulting, that relationship building with yeah. my clients is 100% uh, the reason that I built my company the way that I did. And I would say that philosophy and psychology are a huge part of that because I'm constantly putting myself in the position of the person that you want to connect with. Uh, I try to stay outside the cobwebs, as it were, of the company where you know so much about what it is that you're doing that you forget that other people don't. And Mm -hmm. uh, I try as hard as I can to remain one of those people that just don't get it, that just don't know yet. And how do you connect with me? And what does that look like? And that's really where the, the consultation comes from, because if I stay far enough outside, I get to ask all of those questions. And my job with you is to help find the answers and then to help create the imagery that supports those yeah. answers. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I, I didn't know the history beyond the name, beyond design. <laughs> beyond design, just right? the, anything that goes beyond the design. And that makes so much sense to me that it's not just the logo you create, but no. it's how will it make people feel? What will they think when they see it? Is it will it create the message that you want it to create? And, and does it, uh, does it reach the audience that you're wanting to reach all those things when you're, when you're thinking about how you're creating something? Absolutely. And it's hard to be objective. Um, especially when you, you are in the creation process, you know, AGC is your baby yeah. and, uh, you're not going to be able to stay outside of the love that you have for what it is that you're creating. So having someone who can objectively look at, um, your company, your idea, your brand, if you will, and point to areas that maybe aren't quite what they could be or areas that are working supremely well that should be capitalized on is super important. And you're right, a brand is more than just a logo. It's more than just a graphic. Um, It is everything that you want people to know about who you are and what you want to be to them and how we communicate that from the imagery and the colors that we use down to the words that we say and uh, every area that you're going to be in, whether it's print, social media, or standing up in front of people. Yeah. Having an outside objective, someone looking in at your business is so important. I mean, in everything, in, in which is why I use a lot of advisors. I mean, I have a business coach. I have a lot of trusted people that I seek advice from whenever mm-hmm. I'm making big decisions. And I learned this from, you know, I, I've been in the networking world a long time and I've b- been building teams for a long time. And I, I had this one person that I had invited onto the team. Yep. And I didn't like them. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't. It happens. I'll, I'll tell you, I didn't like them. I. Uh, it wasn't re- me, was it? No, 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 no. <laughs> and I, I didn't really want to invite them on the team. And when I did, I knew I would get immediate feedback from the other people on the team. Why is this person on here? And why do you do that? And because it's just someone that they're really good at what they do, but they're kind of awkward or they've had uh, some just social backwardness and uh, but really good at what they do and this has been years ago and so I I got those questions from my team 
And, and I said, I'll tell you why. I'll mm -hmm. tell you why that I brought this person on. It's because every time that I have a new idea, I have a thought or we're getting ready to do something, you tell me how great it is. This person picks it apart. <laughs> this person yes. says, you know what? That's not going to work because of this. Or why did you do it that way? Or what message are you trying to convey? And what do you want to accomplish from this? What is your goal from that? And they challenge me and they challenge me to be better Absolutely. That, and you need people like that in your life and, and in the design. And not only, I think, uh, and, and maybe we'll get to this in, in a moment with the podcast, but building a brand from the very beginning yes, or rebranding, reconsidering your brand and what that could look like. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that because I think a lot of people want a team of yes individuals yeah. around yeah. them. Um, people that will support whatever it is that they say. And in certain parts of your life and business, I think that's important. It's important to have people that are willing to lift you up and come alongside you. Uh, but <clears throat> you have to know that they're doing it truthfully mm -hmm. and uh, with integrity. And I, I do not shoot holes in people's ideas for yeah. the sake of, you know, being able to do that. Um, but I can be very brutally honest when I see things that, in my professional opinion, um, could derail something that's really, really good. And, you know, again, it, it just becomes that really valuable exchange where individuals hire me to tell them sometimes what it is no one else is willing to tell them. And it's important for me in, in that position to stay outside of the organization. Uh, I've even had, you know, offers for employment people saying oh, great you know i'll hire you you can you can come on to our marketing team and be our designer sure um and i'm flattered by that but that relationship switch from outside consultant to employee also changes the perception of what it is that i tell you and yeah. suddenly as an employee i might be disrespectful because mm -hmm. well you're the boss and i'm not yeah. um where in that outside relationship that's exactly what you would have paid me to do is to tell you what's going on and what I think. And um, yeah, it, it can get tricky when you're developing a brand, um, certainly because you have to consider not only what you love, but what's going to speak to other people. Yeah. And uh, they don't always partner up exactly the way that you want them to. Yeah. Yeah. I've done designs I don't love. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, and I, you know, I have humbled myself to change my own way of thinking, right? Because I have to I have to reflect on sure. what I hold to be truth and say, wait, you know, this person has a valid point. Maybe you need to rethink that, Holly, yeah. uh, and uh, make sure that you're listening as well as speaking. So what I love about working with you, in the very beginning, you were instrumental in, in sharing with me, okay, Travis, um, branding, we want to accomplish these things. And here are the things that I know uh, will will help serve us. And I fought you on a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And and we had a lot of back and forth. And sure. I wanted lots of color. And you're like, no, it needs to be simple. And, this, and you steered me all in the right ways. But now, uh, a year later, working with you is even uh, more fun and interesting because you're so in tune to the brand. You know exactly what I'm looking for. You know the direction that the organization's going. The, it, it, there's less of the back and forth because you're in tune to what we're all doing. It's like we've built a team together. Absolutely. Well, and I mean, that's one of the reasons that uh, I get to retain clients. Yeah. Uh, it's one thing to you know sit down and help someone create a brand. It's another thing to be in a position to guard that brand. Mm -hmm. And you're right. We did have a lot of back and forth to get to what is... Um, the visual representation of AGC. And we fought a little bit about color. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, design is always changing. And personal aesthetic is different from business aesthetic. And sure. uh, that's absolutely true in my own company. You know, what I put out as my brand, it speaks to me, but it also has to speak to my client base who might be interested in hiring me. Yep. And... Um, the beauty of the relationship that we've built now is exactly what you said. There isn't a lot of back and forth, but that's because we spent a lot of time communicating on the front end yeah. and making sure that what we were building made sense. And now it's just a matter of guarding that and making sure that how we feel one day 
doesn't alter how we communicate. Sure. Um, because left to our own devices, myself included, we can kind of be all over the board when it comes to our style based on our emotion. Yeah. And uh, I, I love that, you know, you can come to me and, uh, and say, hey, I need this thing. And I already in my mind have an idea of how to build it so that it stays on brand for you. And uh, there's a little bit of back and forth, of course, like yeah. there always will be to make sure that it's perfect, but it, uh, it goes really smoothly now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you haven't caught on yet, if you're watching or if you're listening, uh, Holly at Beyond Design did the AGC logo. That's right. She did the logo. And anywhere you see the logo, anywhere, it, yeah. it, it, it came from you. And, and not only the logo, but the font, uh, the, any, the branding on our PowerPoints and website and social media banners and everything is, I mean, if you look at us, I get compliments on it all the time because people say, I see you everywhere there. <laughs> And it's, it's because they recognize the brand everywhere I go. Absolutely. And so, and, and sometimes a lot of our audience is, is business owners or salespeople, they're entrepreneurs, and they're trying to do a lot of this on their own. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and uh, their Instagram looks different than their Facebook or their Facebook looks different than their LinkedIn when it comes to branding and they're using different pictures or different uh, colors and different things. And so... I, I would love to know from you, like, if you were speaking to a business owner, a salesperson, an entrepreneur, what are some little tips or advice that you'd be willing to share um, that uh, when someone's considering either hiring a designer or uh, maybe they're on a, on a budget where I've got to do a little bit myself and I'm going to work up to, I can come to you. Right, right. Well, um, what I would say to start is that Consistency is going to be key. And, you know, obviously, this is what I do. So I would say that I am a very valuable part of yeah. anyone's team. And I think the reason for that is because, as you said, um, sometimes things just are close, but not quite the same. And the more frequently individuals or organizations get close, but not mm -hmm. quite the same, Pretty soon, what was one brand morphs into something very, very different. And there are a lot of moving parts when you're talking about holding on to or possibly even changing a brand. Now, yeah. one of the questions you ask is, well, what do you, you know, what do you want to consider if you're, can you hire a designer? Should you hire a designer? And when? And I guess I would say that um, a consultation, first of all, yeah. for almost any designer, um, should be complimentary or low cost. Sure. And having someone come in and take a look at your stuff and identify areas that are working well and also areas that could be improved upon is going to help first. Um, and then if you have a brand and or you have a design that you really like or a logo that you really like, have you thought beyond that? Um, have you considered if the logo supports your vision for your company or the mission that it has? And have you had anyone develop what I would consider a brand board? And this board basically tells anyone who is affiliated with creating things for you, what do they need to follow? What is the color? What is the style? What are the fonts? What are our communication tools? What are people supposed to feel? And that board is always something to go back to and say, does it fit the brand? Is what I have created on track with what I have identified my brand to be? And as a individual business owner, maybe you need someone like me on your team, or maybe you just need to look at that brand board if you have one and say, did this thing that I create match the brand? And if the answer to that is yes, awesome use it and if the answer to that is i don't know then pick up the phone yeah. and ask someone who can tell you objectively um the biggest issue that i always see is that people think that it's cost prohibitive um, to have a professional on your team and sometimes that's true you know depending on what your budget is it, it can be kind of hard to budget in a professional uh, but your time is worth a lot and if you're spending two to three to four hours yeah. trying to make something work in a program that's not designed for design, sure. <laughs> you're going to be frustrated. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that 
I could maybe do that same design in less than 30 minutes. Who knows? Yeah. And that frees up so much of your time to focus on things that I can't do for you or that another designer couldn't do for you that is absolutely what you need to be doing. Yeah. And, and from the customer's perspective and looking back now, I'm so glad that we made the investment to do this early <laughs> than to try to fix it later. Right. I mean, what if we had started with a hand drawing uh, and and it stayed close to that? Right. Because <laughs> I am not a designer. I don't I don't. Although I'm a creative person, I'm I don't have the tools. I don't I don't have the experience. I don't have the years of doing this uh, to know. Yes, that's great. No, that's gonna be great. And when I came to you, uh, I came with the end in mind. Yes. And I said uh, I'm looking to develop something that will be a global brand. Right. And when when you shared uh, branding board. That is so important because as we take this out and we roll AGC out into other regions and other states and other uh, countries and so on, that it looks the same no matter where you are in the country, no matter where you are in the world. Certainly. And you can see that with franchises um, all of the time. They pay a lot of money to a team to develop a brand that, mm -hmm. regardless of location, yeah. um, is unchanging. And thankfully for you know AGC, you've got a quality, uh, a quality component in that that is is going to be unchanging regardless of the area, the geographical area that you're yeah. in. But if um, AGC looked completely different, let's say in Chicago, or looked yeah. really different in Dallas, you wouldn't be able to build a global brand off of that. You would just yeah. have localized pockets of something that resembled what you wanted it to be sure. from the beginning. And uh, absolutely, as, as you continue to roll forward, um, making sure that there's consistency in that and that you're always checking it is gonna be key yeah. on, on creating something that's not only uh, Minnesota-based, but now national and then sure. global. Yeah, and, and language plays a part in that as well. So when you're thinking about, I'm gonna take this uh, to other countries, if you have slogans, if you're using uh, taglines or anything sure. that, that could be within your brand, it has to be able to translate. It does. Yeah. And you know, one of the questions that I ask a lot of companies, especially startups, when they come to me is what is like, if you could just dream big for a second, what is your dream for this? Because success means different things to different people. Yeah. And uh, the best story that I have is with a company that actually came to me because of a rebrand. And uh, we, we sat down and uh, the gentleman that owned the company, wonderful guy, uh, explained to me that he couldn't understand why he wasn't getting the business that he wanted in, yeah. in new construction. It happened to be a construction company. And uh, I said, okay, well, show me what we have. Let's, let's talk about this. And um, as it turned out, when he named his company, he named it for a portion of construction, right? So sure. um, he was going into building new houses, but he had a company name that was specific to siding. Yeah. And people couldn't make the connection between a siding company being able to build a whole house. Yeah. And it wasn't for lack of skill. It wasn't that he wasn't doing wonderful things. It was just that what he was communicating is, I only do this piece. And so we had to look at that and say, okay, well, you're no longer just a siding company. And keeping a name and a brand that is specifically related to that isn't going to grow you. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, we were able to bridge that gap and rebrand start something new and and it took off and, and he's doing very well but my goal when i talk to new companies is to have that dream conversation what could this be and is there anything that we're doing today that might stop that from happening yeah and so in this case of agc accelerated global connections what if we had stopped and named it minnesota connections right or twin cities connections yes and then what would that do to your big dream it stops it. It stops it from being able to be something more. Yeah. Conversely, Travis, if you would have sat across from me and said, Holly, I want to be the best in Minnesota connections, and I have no desire to go any further than that. Our conversation and your brand could look very different from what it does now. Sure. It would still fit, but we'd have to have that success conversation and that dream conversation to make sure that it was right. Yeah. 
I'm so glad I'm a big dreamer <laughs> that I have the vision to do that. Yeah. Well, uh, and sometimes and, it's challenging to, you know, to have somebody dream big because yeah. they're just starting. You, also, when when you're talking about brand, because this leads me, it just it's so easy for this interview because of the conversations we've previously had. And back to that type of conversation, it was also about how will this brand look on, uh, on you know, on apparel? How will yeah. this brand look on a pen? How, on an AGC pen? On an AGC pen. <laughs> how will this uh, brand look on uh, an app icon? Yes. You know, and those type of things. And designing a brand that will work online on paper everywhere it's used and that had to really majorly change the industry when people started using their mobile devices for everything absolutely you know um my company itself started 15 years ago and so even 15 years ago while design itself and the need for design i don't think has changed or probably will change how design gets done is changing rapidly and we were we were working with things that were primarily print um, there wasn't a lot of social media exchange happening apps were few and far between and certainly weren't being widely used the beautiful thing about design now stylistically is that it's really been simplified. Um, when I first started, one would have to create designs that could be printed because stylistically, things like beveling and embossing and making things yeah. shiny and drop yeah. shadows and all of these technical terms that most of the listening audience or watching audience probably doesn't even recognize, yeah. those were things and they mm -hmm. were important to design that was going to be printed. But you're right, apparel still existed. People still yep. wanted things on pens. They still wanted things on shirts. And so now you were trying to build two different designs that both supported the same brand, one that could actually be stitched yep. or screen printed, and another that would look good um, going onto a website or being printed in a newspaper. Those were around 15 years ago yeah. in much greater supply than today. Sure. Um, and so it, it was a very different process. The neat thing about today's design is that it has really taken a turn to something that is much simpler, um, much more clean, much easier to replicate. And so things don't get diluted nearly as easily. And uh, I have, you know, the great ability to, um, to sit down with people and, you know, spend my day as a professional kindergartner coloring and drawing oh, all day great. long. I love that. And, uh, and create something that I know is going to look good on all of those platforms yeah. and uh, and then, you know, be able to have those great conversations and, and uh, explain how and why these things work and where they can work. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're right. When when I shared the vision with you for AGC and, and becoming a global brand and I came to you with uh, all, all these different ideas around colors and this and that and you help me develop what the brand is today and one of the ways that you did that for me that was the most helpful because i was fighting you on a lot of it i really was and you're making it sound worse than it was uh, well let's just say there was a lot of conversation it, sure. was, it wasn't a bad conversation it was just a conversation just a lot yeah and um which but, is typical, by the way. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to be Holly's uh, problem client. I no, really don't. not at all. But um, one of the ways that you helped me, you said, let's think of some other global brands. Mm -hmm. And you helped me see, I wrote down something you said just a moment ago, and you said simplify. Yes. And when we were looking at that, you shared some brands with me that are simplified. And I, I would love maybe if you could recap a little bit of that. Well, I, you know, I remember that conversation fondly because I think I was actually driving with Bluetooth. At yeah, I do my the... best thinking while I'm driving and yeah. conversation. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and we had that conversation because you are a colorful personality. You love yeah. color. And in your day-to-day -day life, that is exactly how you want to be. You want to be surrounded by that. Uh, but color can sometimes be messy and it can portray... Uh, different feelings for different people. There's a lot around color psychology, conversations that are being had about how colors make people feel. And there's a reason that stop signs are red, yeah. right? And there is a reason that a lot of things that ignite the idea of trust are not red. 
Um, in yeah. fact, they are blue. And um, so, you know, we get to have those conversations, but we, we took a look at some really big brands. And, um, and while I would say that it's important to make sure that you are not copying brand, um, taking inspiration from companies sure. that you respect to see what they have done just allows that learning curve to shorten quite a bit. And so we looked at brands like Apple and Facebook. Yep. And you know, I could name a number of others that have really, over the course of decades, simplified their brand mm -hmm. to be something that is less intrusive, less in your face. And what we've learned from those companies is that they've done it and they've been wildly successful in doing it. And there is a trust relationship that has been built over time with them. And so through images, we can say, what have they done visually? And how has that been received? And what can we take from that that we have learned and implement in this industry with this company? And so when you came to me and you said, well, I, what I would like to do is I would like to have these six different colors because they really speak to me. Um, what I came back to show to you is let's look at all of these top brands and identify how many of those currently are using six colors. Sure. And the answer is none. None yep. of them are. In the future, could design styles change? Sure. Could we go back or forward to things that are more colorful that have different styles that's a possibility and that's why you know developing and continually monitoring the climate for a design is important it's not just a one and done sort of thing in the same way that i'm guessing travis you don't have the same hairdo you did when you were a sophomore in high school very true right we've grown up <laughs> we've changed a little bit i'm sure. the same way right my my style has adjusted for the times but i am still who i am yeah. are you still who you are i am absolutely yep. so at its core the DNA is the same. The DNA is the same. What we produce, we want to make sure is on par with what is being well received at this time. And yeah. so when we had those conversations, that's really what we looked at. We looked at what is happening in today's climate that people are going to respond to. And that's how we got to where we are with your, with your brand. One of the things that I love about AGC and what we've created in AGC is that I get to surround myself with experts like you. And, and I don't have to know everything. Like I just, okay. I'm, I'm in a community of people that I can get the answers I need, that I can get the help that I need because of those experts. So I'm just curious from you, uh, someone that's been around from the very early design, uh, how would you recommend AGC? Oh gosh. Well, what I saw from AGC is, is something similar to what I saw in my own company, which is I identified a hole that was necessary in the marketplace for Beyond Design. And when you came to me, <clears throat> excuse me, with your first ideas for AGC, and you explained your vision for what you wanted this organization to do, I knew right away that it was filling a hole. It was filling a much needed hole for individuals to be able to meet um, at a certain time of the day um, where they could connect with other business professionals in an open and welcoming environment that wasn't just about referral passing, mm -hmm. Uh, because we know that that works, sure. uh, but it was also about relationship building and getting to see some of these same people on a regular basis so that we could get to know them as individuals and get to know their companies a little bit better. And then take that opportunity to connect and network with them and also have a chance in that same social time to sit down and grow ourselves as individuals and, and grow our businesses because of someone like you said, who is an expert in their field imparting upon us wisdom that they have that we might not have. And that's huge. I mean, to connect with individuals and then sit down and learn how to grow our businesses and learn how to grow ourselves and then be able to take that and implement it in our day-to-day -day working lives. Yeah. That was the whole AGC built uh, or filled. And uh, it's the organization that, that you built. And I think it's where, I mean, what, you're one. I know, one year it's old. It's your birthday. <laughs> oh, I'm super excited. It is awesome. Yeah, it, it's... um. I said the other day, I was teaching a class on business networking, mm -hmm. and I had a room full of people, and I, from the front of the room, I said, it is not enough to just be good or even excellent at what you do. It is not enough. You not only have to be good or excellent at what you do, 
but you have to know and be connected to the right people. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm so thrilled that I found you, uh, I... that we connected, that you were a part of building AGC brand and helping it get where it is today. If there are other people who are watching or listening and they realize that they need your help <laughs> and it's either one of a few things going on, they're, they're like me and they're going, I'm in something that I'm not uh, loving or enjoying or that I want to do something different or I have a big dream and they want to start and they're fresh and they've got this clean slate and they need your help in the very early design. Or it's, we've had this brand for a while mm -hmm. and we're no longer wearing bell-bottom jeans and we've got to figure out how to rebrand for the future. And no matter the size of the business, whether it's the solopreneur, the entrepreneur, or the major corporation or the global organization, how do we find and get in touch with you? Oh, well, thanks for asking. Um, so the name of my company is Beyond Design. And you can find me on Facebook underneath Graphic Beyond Design. Uh, there's a small portfolio there, which is kind of fun to flip through. It shows you some of the stuff that I've been doing. Otherwise, uh, you can also find me online at www.graphicbeyonddesign.com. And contact information is all there. Reach out to me. You can email. You can call. Um, I'm excited to talk to people that are starting something new that are, like you said, in the weeds or that are even loving everything about their brand and they just don't have the time or the energy yeah. to fully develop it and they want someone else to come and take that load off because we know i'm sure you know i know yeah. we wear lots of hats yes. as business owners yes. and to be able to hand that hat to someone else and say here you take this that's huge that's a huge weight off your shoulders and it gives you an opportunity to free up some time and focus on other things that are going to help you grow Absolutely. Well, thank you, Holly, for being a guest today. I was thank so you so much for here. having me. Oh, awesome. If you're watching, if you're listening at home, uh, thank you for tuning in to the AGC Experience podcast. Uh, it is the smart podcast for business owners and salespeople, entrepreneurs. Uh, so please share this episode uh, with Absolutely. others that you think could benefit. And thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. This podcast was produced by Elation Studios. Go to www.elationstudios.co to learn more. Elation Studios. Discover your voice. Clarify your vision. Build your life. AGC is amazing because it's an opportunity to network with um, professionals and just a different atmosphere, kind of the happy hour time frame and um, just kind of more of a social gathering but yet still making really good connections. I have gone to other evening networking events and quite frankly it was a little uncomfortable. This is so different, this is much more professional. Every single time I come, it's a different group of people every time. It's never the same people. It's never the same 12 people or the same 40 people. It's 80 to 100 different people every time. So that's why I actually legitimately love AGC. The talks are very inspiring. I love the people that they get to speak at each of the events because you kind of leave feeling really pumped and super excited about your week and what you're doing in your business. But it's also what you're able to do beyond the event. The digital aspect of it, connecting with people online, getting in touch, messaging, uh, being able to look at photos and videos of the events. When you add all those things together, there's no other networking platform that combines those elements for uh, the investment that this takes. Come visit. You know, come check out our events. The first one is absolutely free and hear the stories and decide truly if it's right for you by just trying it out.